Welcome back to the channel. One of those topics that's really close to my heart and makes my blood boil, so I'm making yet another video about it. Those of you who know um, what's happening in London with this congestion charge and the proposed pollution plans to reduce pollution. Unfortunately, we have Sadiq Khan, who is our mayor. Um, he's a left-wing politician who has been elected by left-wing supporters who think that religion and politics is one and the same thing. They don't think, they just vote because their ancestors, their friends, everyone else does. They have to go to the same church and vote for the same people, irrespective of what they do. This may sound harsh, but if you put a peasant to conduct heart surgery, the patient is going to die. That's the problem with London. London is a very big cosmopolitan city. It's overpopulated. It's complex to manage. And if you put people in charge who have never managed things like this, who don't have the qualifications, who are just puppets and politicians, they're going to destroy the city. We had similar problems with the previous um, left-wing mayor, Ken Livingston. When he came in, he increased the time that you spent at traffic lights, he made the footpaths really wide, narrowed the streets, and he said he was discouraging people from driving cars. All he was doing was creating massive traffic jams around London. Sadiq Khan has taken this to another level. First of all, he's introduced a congestion charge of £15 a day to enter central London. There's a specific zone, which is called the congestion charge zone, and if you enter it between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. at night, you have to pay 15 pounds. Beyond that, there's an ultra low emission zone, which is where you have to pay 12 pounds 50 to drive your car in that zone. So if you enter the first ultra low emission zone, you have to pay 12 pounds 50. Then you go further and you enter the congestion charge zone, you have to pay 15 pounds. So if you're poor, don't come to London. So the left-wing party is not the party of the poor, it's the party of the stupid, because they are clearing up the roads for the rich. If you have money, it doesn't matter. Who has old cars? Cars that pollute the environment, cars that are more than six years old and are diesel. Rich people? No. Poor people. There's an estimate that 130,000 cars in London have now come into this group which will be liable to pay this £12.50 charge. So obviously those will instantly devalue because suddenly you have 130,000 cars in the city that are going to cost money to drive every day. Those people are going to try to sell them, the market will be flooded and the car's values will drop. Second thing is to buy a newer car, they have to add more money. That means that suddenly poor people will be poorer because either they pay £12.50 every day plus £15 if they want to go into the congestion charge zone or they change their car and they don't pay £12.50 but then they have to pay a huge amount of money to upgrade their car. Where on this planet does this appear to be a good strategy? You are impacting the lives of ordinary citizens, ordinary people. That's 130,000 people in one go that you have hit with a massive cost. It could be more out of the nine to 12 million people that live in London. I doubt that there's only 130,000 cars that are falling into this category, but that was the statistic I found on the internet. Second thing is he has closed off all the side streets in residential areas. I say all, but a huge majority of them. So when you have a main road and you have an arterial road, sometimes there are roads connecting those. So when there was a traffic jam on one side, if someone had to go to this end and then turn right, they would turn right here go through the arterial road, get to their destination faster, perhaps less traffic jams. 
So he's closed off those roads and put cameras on them. So if you enter those roads, you get a fine. And there, that's caused more traffic jams on the main roads and also on the arterial roads because people can't switch between the two. You have to continue on a certain path. So there are constant traffic jams everywhere in London. So on the one hand, he says he is reducing and tackling pollution. On the other hand, he's causing massive traffic jams. So which one is it? The whole idea of this congestion planning or ultra low emission zone should have been to reduce pollution, allow the traffic to move faster, because if the traffic moves faster, there'll be less traffic jams and less pollution. But you have lines and lines of double-decker buses, first of all, that again boils my blood because peak hours, I can understand you need to run double-decker buses because there are more people, but off-peak, there is no need for a bus to arrive every one minute. In other countries around Europe, Germany, France, with big populations, they have five to ten minute people organize their time and go to the bus stop when they know the bus is coming rather than just turning up and knowing that there'll be a bus every minute. Those buses, the servicing, the maintenance, the fuel, all of that is causing massive pollution. He's also closed off all the bus lanes to ordinary cars. In the past, in the off-peak times, you could drive in the bus lane. Now, you have a massive traffic jam all throughout the normal lanes and an empty bus lane in the evenings and at night. Completely useless and pointless because the idea is to let the traffic flow. I don't even know where to begin because this man is so wrong for our city and people have voted for him. So I think people deserve what they get because if they choose such an individual who knows nothing about managing a big city, then they deserve what's coming their way. If poor people are going to become more poor, then it's their own fault. Although they'll blame the rich to say, oh, it's the rich people who are stealing our money. It's the rich people who are doing things to make us poor. They don't understand that rich people get rich by selling things to poor people. If poor people have less money, then they can't sell their products and therefore the whole economy suffers. So you need the money to keep moving and for the masses and the populations to have money to spend. Otherwise, a rich person doesn't grow money on trees. They, they create money from the masses. And because of my channel and because of the lifestyle that I portray, people assume that I'm some rich guy. I'm not. I'm a completely self-made person and I just manage my finances very well. Therefore, I have no sort of affinity to the rich and the super rich and all that because I'm not one of them. But at the same time, I'm not stupid and I'm not blind. I can understand how economics and finance and the world works. And I keep going back to this subject and this point over and over again that we don't elect our plumber. We don't elect our doctors. We don't elect our lawyers. We look for their qualifications. But then we go and elect a politician like Sadiq Khan and make him in charge of all these services and things and everything goes belly up and he destroys it. And there is nothing, no recourse, no checks. It's just one after another. I don't understand why people can't see it. Tony Blair lied through his teeth about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, created this whole war. There were a million people marching the streets, didn't listen, didn't do anything, made millions and millions, and is still continuing to be a parasite on our government funds for all the security and things he needs. And he is now some sort of a ambassador for the Middle East or whatever he's doing. It's just a big scam. Wake up people and see what's happening around you. The people that you're voting for are not here for you. They are there for themselves to make themselves rich. And they just have other agendas. You need to really pay attention. This other guy, I can't remember his name, but there was another guy who 
uh, stood in the election against Sadiq Khan, a black guy from a council estate who grew up in London, knows the real issues of what's going on in the poor communities. He wasn't voted just because he was, I think, supported by the Conservative Party, I believe. I don't know if he was Conservative or if he was an independent candidate, but the point is people voted for Sadiq Khan because he's Labour and left-wing, not because he's the right person. And that's the stupidity. And London will pay the price because every time we have one of these left-wing politicians running the city, they damage it, then we get a right-wing person who comes and fixes it and then keeps coming back and over and over and over again. If you want people to drive less, reduce the cost of public transport. A daily travel card from zone one to four is 10 pounds a day, 10 pounds something a day. It's outrageous. Travel cards and transport should be so cheap that people think, ah, it's in my interest to use public transport. Okay, so that's my little rant about our current mayor and the ultra low emission zone and the congestion charge and what he's doing and how he's bankrupted TFL twice and asked the government for 1.6 billion and now he's raising that money through these conniving and deceptive ways of pollution. So I hope things change. Anyway, I'm planning to leave London, so I hope I can leave very quickly and not have to live here and not have to contribute any money towards this mayor and his actions. And, and it's been almost nearly two years that I haven't been to central London. So since Sadiq Khan introduced that 15 pound a day congestion charge as a protest, I haven't been to central London and I haven't bought anything from the congestion charge zone. So yes, I'm one individual, but I used to spend money two, three times a week in shops around that area. And if I'm not going, I'm sure other people are not going. So all that tax money and the council tax and business rates or whatever it's called that was coming from those businesses is not coming. You can make that 15 pounds, the virtual 15 pounds a day, but you're not getting anything else. And for those who are super rich, paying 12 pounds 50 plus 15 pounds means nothing. So in reality, you have created a city for the rich and you've pushed the poor people out. So well done Sadiq Khan.